The origin of soaring dates back to the mid to late 1930s at the dawn of the Tennessee walking horse breed. Stories differ, but it was around this time that showmen discovered that either mustard oil being used to treat hoof ailment or kerosene used to clean some road tar off the lower legs caused this horse to step livelier. Come to the regular Saturday night show, this horse snapped his hooves off the ground as if they were on fire. Wild-eyed, he flew around the ring, barely setting a hoof on the ground before snatching it back up again. The crowd loved it. Experimentation followed, then imitation from other exhibitors began. Before long, the fix was in, which soaring of one type or another has infiltrated horse shows from the big lick to the flat shod, which is smaller, lighter weighed shoes. From Tennessee walking horses to other breeds, including racking horses, spiled, spotted saddle horses, Missouri fox trotters, and the Paso breeds. This just shows that it's not just a problem in the Tennessee walking horse industry. The concept of soaring, fixing, or burning is enough to make any decent horseman cringe. According to the USDA, the application of any chemical or mechanical agent applied to the lower leg or hoof of any horse is, that causes pain or can be expected to cause pain for any purpose of enhancing the horse's gait for show purposes is strictly prohibited under the Horse Protection Act as amended 15U.S.C.SS. 1821-1831 A variety of cruel and devious methods are used to soar horses. The chemicals used to soar include mustard oil, diesel fuel, kerosene, salicylic acid, collodion, which is a mixture of 5-10% to peroxin, 20-30% to ethanol, and 60-70% to diethyl ether. It is also known as proxen solution or nitrocellulose solution. Then after painting these caustic chemi chemicals on the horse's pasterns, the horse's legs are then wrapped in plastic wrap with leg wraps over the top so the chemicals can cook into the flesh. Injections of harmful chemicals and drugs are also made into the horse's pastern area above the hoof using hypodermic syringes. Mechanical means such as pressure shoeing involve putting a foreign object such as screws, bolts, or half a golf ball against both of the horse's front hoof soles and then shoeing with the pad and horseshoe over the object. Similar to what was previously stated is road fondering. The hoof wall may be rasped away nearly to the quick where it starts to bleed and then the shoe is nailed on. The horse is then ridden up and down a hard surface like roadways on or near showgrounds until the hooves are sore. The next time you see an exhibitor warming up on the roadway, take note. So with using, using any of these methods, each time the horse steps or puts weight on the hoof, it causes excruciating pain to the horse, therefore making the desired high stepping gait. A former insider describes a typical scene at one of the barns. The first thing you might notice about a sword barn is a strange smell. That is, if you're not distracted by a smooth-talking barn employee or just run off altogether. Though the barn might have a public area, much of it is off-limits. The barn may seem dark because the stalls are shut up to keep the horses from view and to muffle the sound of the horses groaning from the terrible pain that they have to endure. The horses are also down a lot, so there is less weight on their legs, so there's less pain. If you get close enough to look at the horses, Look in their eyes. That pain shows through. What to look for to tell if a horse is sore? It is crucial to understand that there are different levels of sore. From sensitivity to agony, here are some obvious signs. Tenderness or swelling on both front hooves, or even the hind hooves. Soaring is bilateral. Scars or granulated bumps along the pasterns or near the coronet band. Abnormal wavy hair growth following acid treatment in the pastern area. Horse resists handling of hooves. Horse lies down frequently for extended amounts of time. Horse shifts weight to the hind legs or stands with all four hooves together as if on a quarter. Exaggerated gait with characteristic pause at breakover, which is the highest point of stride as horse hesitates before returning the sore hoof to the ground. Oozing of blood or serum from the pasterns drags front toes because of the pain on the concussion upon set down. Hawks carried low to the ground and twisting towards the outside while moving. Horse has difficulty walking. Horse falls and is resistant to get up. 
Fortunately, there are organizations out there to stop soaring. One of them is Friends of Sound Horses, FOSH. Their mission statement is to promote sound, naturally gated horses with a specific emphasis on Tennessee walking horses. FOSH will only support flat shod or barefoot horses and will never endorse any event that uses stacks or chains as action devices, nor any mechanical, chemical, or artificial means to modify the natural gaits of the horse. FOSH focuses on three areas for gated horses. 1. Educating people on the sound training principles. 2. Sanctioning sound shows and events. And 3. Working to end soaring.